Today, we're going to be discussing the 2020 insurance plan for Widow Foster, and we're going to discuss a all hazards plan with sheltering in place. So, to get us started, we do have a couple of visitors from EM4, so give it up for Travis! So, thank you all for, for being here today. Uh, EM4 is Honored to, to be a part of what you all are doing here. And to be able to offer you all some, some coverages that we hope help you all and, and uh, for everything you do within the community and, and everything you do here, we're, we're proud to partner with you all. So, so thank you all for having us today. Um, we're going to do a quick overview of the benefits today. So keep your questions for the end and we will uh, go through those. So our meeting goals for today we just kind of go over the employee benefit plans that are offered here at Wendell Foster and we'll highlight some changes for you all and then at the end we can answer any questions. So in your pamphlet that uh, Blair and her team put together, um, you all can follow along. There's a ton of information in there for you. Uh, you'll see there's explanations, there's pricing. So they did a fantastic job with that. So it's going to be easy to follow along with this here. So on page three, you'll see your benefit providers. Medical is through Lucent Health, Telemedicine is through Health ESU, Vision is through Davis Vision and via HRI. Uh, dental is HRI, the Group of Voluntary Life is One America. Disability, Critical Care, Accident is through Colonial Life. EAP or Employee Assistance Program is through the Health Park here in Oldsboro. And then 403B is through Mass Mutual. So, page four who is eligible for benefits? If you are a Full-time employees scheduled to work 30 hours or more, you are eligible. Uh, Part-time employees who work 20 hours or more are eligible at a higher cost. Uh, less than part-time PR employees are not eligible for the benefits program. And then dependent children are eligible for all benefits, while the spouses are eligible for all benefits other than the medical. Wendell Foster offers a self-insured PPO for a third-party administrator who handles the claims, and that is Lucent Health. Uh, and Lucent utilizes the OCEAN, the Old Road Community Health Network, for discounts. Uh, you can visit ochn.net to search for a doctor, and you'll select the OCHN Select uh, in that prompt. So that will give you a rundown of who is in that network. Wellness credits on page 6. Wendell Foster is continuing the wellness program for 2020. Uh, the biometric screenings were conducted on site back in October, so if you did miss that and you would like to participate, you have till uh, December 4th, so please go with the HR team here and schedule an appointment. The following criteria are assessed. It's cholesterol, your A1C, which is blood sugar, your blood pressure, your BMI, and then tobacco use. With that, each factor, uh, there is a monthly credit. So again, that is a monthly credit for each employee is $10 for all five factors, so you can earn $50 a month. And then for employee plus children, you can actually earn $20, so that equals out to $100 per month, uh, which is pretty good. It's putting money back in your, in your wallet uh, just to participate in wellness and take care of your health. So uh, the screens are conducted annually here at Wendell Foster Health Fair, and the new employees have six weeks uh, from the day medical insurance is effective to complete the screening to, to receive the credits for the current higher year. On well, page 9, over medical coverages, um, your deductible did increase slightly and your max out of pocket did increase slightly as well. Uh, you'll see there your deductible for an individual is $2,000 and for the family is $4,000. Uh, your co insurance is 70% of the plan and then the employees are responsible for 30%. And your max out of pocket is $35 for individual and $7,000 for family. So a quick explanation on that. Let's say you have an event, you um, first in January, $10,000 right off the bat. The first $2,000 are coming out of your pocket. Uh, from there, the co-insurance will kick in. They will cover 70%. You'll, you'll cover the 30%. So you would, you would be charged for 30% on the next $5,000 because that would be 1500 So at that point, you would reach $3,500. That's your max out of pocket. After that, you're done for the year. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. It can be a little confusing, but again, right off the bat, $2,000, then your co-insurance will kick in, and then your max out-of-pocket is $3,500 for the year. Uh, after that, you are finished. So 
You'll see your preventative care is covered at 100%. Your primary care is $35 copay. Uh, specialist is $35 as well. Urgent care is also $35. Uh, you'll see ER services below that. That's going to be deductible first, and then 30% coinsurance. So we advise you all to use your urgent cares, uh, use telemedicine, which we'll kind of get into here in a second, uh, before you go to the ER. Now, if it's something catastrophic and, and you know that you need to go to the ER, absolutely go to the ER, take care of yourself, get well. But do know that it will come from your deductible and then 30% coinsurance for an ER visit. Just assuming it's about $1,000, I would assume if you go to the ER. So just, just think about if you're just sick, maybe use an urgent care as, a, as opposed to going to the ER. Uh, your prescription drugs, these are also on page nine. Uh, you'll see you'll have a $100 deductible. So you'll meet that first and then your co-pays will kick in. So your generics are $10, uh, your, your formulary brands are $30, and then your non-formulary are $50. So uh, doctors can sometimes be incentivized to give you the name brand uh, medicines. So always ask for a generic. Uh, it's going to be much cheaper for you, it's going to be much cheaper for Wilma Foster, and it's going to do the exact same thing. So if your doctor does prescribe your medicine, always ask if there's a generic available. And a lot of times there will be. So uh, it, it, it will save you money and it does, again, it does the exact same thing. Uh, we also want to advise you all to use GoodRx.com. Has anybody ever used GoodRx? So all it is, it's an app, and it's fantastic. You just you put in your zip code, you put in the medicine, and it'll give you a list of everywhere in the area, let's say Owensboro, for instance, of uh, Walgreens, CVS, Walmart, Kroger, and it'll give you the price without your insurance. A lot of times, GoodRx will actually save you money cheaper than, than even your, your health benefits. So use it. It's, it's free to use. Uh, it takes two seconds and you can get your medicine for a much cheaper cost. And, and in the end, it'll save Wilco Foster and your premiums money as well for next year. So, uh, goodrx.com. So, this is uh, discussing the Affordable Care Act. We want to offer everyone affordable insurance and be compliant with that. So, you'll see here, employee only, if you make less than eleven oh five per hour, your monthly cost and your cost per paycheck. Uh, if you make over eleven oh five, you'll see that right below cost per month and then cost per paycheck and then the employee uh, and children are right below that. So telemedicine. So has, has anyone ever used this? It's, it's fantastic. I was, I was really, really sick one day. I didn't want to get out. I didn't want to put clothes on. I didn't want to go sit in urgent care for an hour, two hours, uh, coughing people all around me. I'm coughing, getting everyone sick. So what this is is basically a FaceTime, a telephone call. 24-7, 365 to a board certified physician. So all you have to do is get your phone and basically you'll have a board certified doctor right there to help diagnose you for some minor cause, minor um, illnesses. And you can see some of those things, allergies, sinus infections, uh, the flu, pink eye, and nausea. Uh, I don't have children, but I can imagine if you're sick and you have to get your children out as well, no one really wants to do that. So this is an easy, convenient way for you to get the medicine you need and see a doctor from the convenience of your own home. So definitely take advantage of this. Uh, these are some new things that we're offering this year as well through telemedicine. You'll see behavioral health. So at all time highs, anxiety, depression, things of those nature. It, it's, it's hard to come into work every day when you're dealing with those things. So see somebody. We're going to offer it through telemedicine here. Uh, take care of yourself. You know, it's, it's totally confidential. Uh, no one should be embarrassed about it. It's the best way to get help and talk to somebody and take care of yourself so that you are an asset here at Wendell Foster. Um, some other things are dermatology, uh, back care, and an expert second opinion. So back care can be debilitating if you have a back issue. Um, if any of you have ever had it, I'm sure you probably know somebody that has. It, it can be debilitating every day. So use this um, to, to help take care of that. And expert second opinion, you, know, you get a diagnosis, really scary. Always get a second opinion, and this is going to offer that to you. So you can take your diagnosis there and make sure that everything you were diagnosed with um, is, in fact, what, what you might be suffering from. So you'll see below, there, this is on page 10. Um, aside from monthly premium, this service is free and available to anyone who lives in the household. So, yes, your spouse isn't covered on medical, but they can use this. Uh, your child can use this. Anybody, they don't have to be covered to use it. And you'll see the premiums here. Um, on the next page to, to use telemedicine. So 
again, it's available to everyone. So you use it one time, and more times than not, it's going to pay for itself. So you'll see covered under uh, Wendell Foster Medical, it's $550 a month, and the cost per paycheck is $275. Not covered, it's $11.550 per pay. So <laughs> definitely want to take advantage of that. You use it one time, it's going to pay for itself. Vision benefits is on page 11. Um, you all can see all of that on there. It's um, your examinations are $10 copay, and that is every 12 months. Your lenses are going to be every 12 months. So you have frames, you need new lenses. You can get those replaced every 12 months. Uh, frames is only covered every 24 months. So you'll see there you'll you can get up to $130 for a pair of frames, and a lot of times you get a 20% discount on average for your frames as well. So you can get a nice pair of glasses. Um, contacts lenses, if you choose those over your actual lenses, you can get those every 12 months as well. And again, that's up to $130 with a 15 discount on average. Um, below that, you'll see the cost. It's there on the page as well. You'll see your monthly cost and your cost per pay. And it, it gives the description of the employee only and employee spouse, whatever your situation may be. Uh, here's the dental benefits. That's on page 12. That's through HRI as well. Um, $1,500 annual maximum and the $1,500 lifetime orthodontic. Maximum. You'll see preventative care is covered at 100%, so your cleanings twice a year, your exams, your x rays. Um, major services are covered at 80%. You can see those the fillings and root canal. And I've actually had a root canal and it was an awful experience, so um, I hope you don't have to use that, but if you do, it is covered at 80%. And it can be a fairly expensive uh, cost. Your basic services are covered at 50%, crowns, restorations, things of that nature. And then you'll also see below there is your monthly cost. It has one up slightly, I want to say about a 5% increase, but you'll see your monthly cost and your cost per pay um, for whatever your situa situation may be as well. Uh, on page 13, uh, we're going to go through life benefits that's through One America. So Window Foster does provide the following life and A and D insurance uh, benefits to no cost to you at all. So, um, the employees covered at one time employee's annual salary, which would max out at $100,000. Spouses are five thousand, and children are twenty five hundred. Um, I'll try to explain A and D. A, D, and D is accidental death and dismemberment. So, your beneficiary, let's say you have an accident, you, you pass away. Your beneficiary will receive your life insurance. Um, if you actually have an accident, let's say a car accident, or you are doing some some stuff on your roof and you fall off, and you happen to have an accident, and pass away, your beneficiary will be paid double for A, D, and D. So, any accident like that, it will be double. Accidental life benefit. So if you're diagnosed with a terminally ill and uh, within 12 months, you may apply to receive 25, 50, to 75% of that, of that life insurance policy um, to take a trip, to do things that you could do with your family. Um, we obviously hope you don't get that diagnosis, but if, if you do, that is available to you. Uh, beneficiary information and event employee's death. Life insurance pays the benefits. Listen to the beneficiary of your choice. And then, yeah, the ADD insurance protects employees in case of an accident, death, or injury. So on page 14, we'll go over voluntary life insurance. Uh, employees collect up in 10,000 increments from 20 to 500,000, four or five times the annual salary, um, matching accidental death and dismemberment as well. And spouse coverage available up to 50% of employees coverage, and the children are covered uh, from coverage to five or 10,000. So supplemental benefits, um, page 15 through 17. Uh, there's quite a bit on there if you want or on, on the page. Um, we're going to offer some accidental insurance, some critical illness, and some short-term disability. Uh, you, you can see there's a couple different options for, for short-term. There's a three-month plan, a 12-month plan. Um, if you're the sole breadwinner within your household, you might want to consider this. You know, it's, it's a way that if something does happen, you get a diagnosis, something happens, you're able to take care of your bills. You're able to stay ahead of the game, uh, and this, these are options for you, whether it be a three-month benefit or a 12-month benefit. Uh, it's just something to consider just in case um, something does happen. And you'll see your supplemental benefits on page um, 16 and 17. Uh, you know, you're covered at 10, or 100% $10,000 benefit for, you know, let's say, a heart attack, blindness, cancer, things of that nature. So. Obviously, no one wants that diagnosis, but if you do get it, it is available to you to, to help out with things around the house. And then you'll see uh, incidents over on page 17. Let's say you go get an x-ray, your benefit will be $30. Let's say you 
<laughs> run an ATV and get a concussion, uh, it's going it's to pay you out 150 bucks. So just look over those, and you'll see on page 17 kind of the, uh, the pay scale for that as well. So employee assistance, um, this is a pretty pretty good program here. Um, Wendell Foster is offering this to be able to have six face-to-face -face sessions for your entire household. So anyone under your house is covered by this, and it's six face-to-face -face for each problem you see below. So it's it's normally three, and it might be one time. Well, here you actually have the option to do these <coughs> to take care of you know marital or family problems, any financial issues healthy living, just to go and talk to somebody, substance abuse, somebody will sit down with you, they're certified, and they can talk you through it so that way you know what options you have available, how to cope with it, and to, to get you in a better place. So it's a, it's a very good thing. Your retirement is through Mass Mutual 403B plan design. Um, Wendell Foster will match up to 5%, which is phenomenal. Um, it's much higher than the industry standard, so we absolutely suggest you all take part in this, and 5% is phenomenal, so. Uh, page 20 and 21, those are your carriers. So you'll see phone numbers on there, a lot of them have your plan numbers. Let's say you lose a car and you don't know where to go. Uh, it's all right there. Phone numbers are available, websites are available. So use that first if you have any questions, you need, you get a diagnosis, you wanna to talk to a doctor, you wanna to talk to somebody about it. Use that first. Your, your backup option is Blair and the HR team here who are phenomenal. They'll help you walk through and then our team at EM Ford will be absolutely glad to help you in any way, shape, or form as well and walk you through any of these steps. So, um, one on one meeting. So, everyone is required to sign up for a one on one meeting, whether it be Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday of next week. We'll have somebody, we'll have people on site to help walk you through this, tell you what your options were last year what your options are this year, um, and you can ask any questions as well. So after this is over, sign up sheets, I believe, are over there. Most of you might have already signed up, but uh, you are required for one-on-one -on -one meetings next week to help with all of your health, health questions. And these are the things you need to have ready. So a lot of times you know your information, but your beneficiary, your children, things of that nature. We need social security numbers, date of birth, thing of that nature. So bring that with you next week so that way you're not down where the team or vice versa they're hunting you down asking you all for social security numbers and, and things like that so that you are ready to go next week. Yeah, absolutely. Real quick. Uh, before you all bring your questions, which we are looking forward to answering, just a couple of things to review. One, first of all, I think these uh, the benefit booklets that everybody in the HR team works so hard to put together are really nice. So I think this is a really nice benefit for you all to have these available to you so you can quickly access what your what your information is that applies to you. So I just wanted to thank them for all the work that they did to put those together. <coughs> They've also worked really hard between them and the finance team uh, to keep costs down as much as possible. It's really difficult in this uh, day and time to keep health care costs down and health insurance costs down specifically. They worked really hard to make sure that that was the case this year and I think did a great job. Uh, to bring it as competitive pricing as, as they possibly could. Uh, one of the things he mentioned that Travis mentioned was the beneficiaries on the, on the life insurance. Don't forget that that life insurance benefit is going to go to the people that you have listed as your beneficiaries. Life happens and things change. And if you haven't looked at that in a few years, you might have somebody that you don't really want to have listed as the beneficiary of your policy. So don't forget to review that information and make sure that that's up to date and correct. The last thing is that 403B match that he talked about. It is a little bit different than a 5% match. It's a 3% match and a 2% non-elected uh, contribution that they're making on your behalf. So they're making a 2% con contribution on your behalf whether you're participating or not, which is a wonderful thing for your employer to do. But then on top of that, they put a 3% match in there. So definitely take advantage of that if you can. Uh, but it's a really nice thing for your employer to be doing it. it is, of the average uh, out there in the marketplace, that's for sure. They, they've gone above and beyond to do that. So I just wanted to mention those a couple of things real quickly. Uh, but if you have any questions, Travis is, is ready to answer every one of those, along with a bunch of players. Now. So we also wanted to introduce Karen Russell. She's back here in the back. Uh, she's an account manager on your all's account and is uh, happy to answer any questions that you all have as we go throughout the, the 
the year as well. So contact us when you have needs. So what questions do you all have at this time? We had lots of questions in the last session, so don't don't hesitate. Don't be shy. <coughs> uh, okay. Well, we appreciate the opportunity to work with you all. We do wonderful work on a daily basis. We're very proud of it. We're proud to be associated with you. Thank you for everything that you do, and we look forward to seeing you throughout the year. Enjoy your holiday season. Thanks again. Thank you. Before we go much further, there is a piece of paper on your table that is titled the Kentucky Pregnant Workers Act. I need for every single employee in here to print your name, sign your name, and date it. And it goes in the center of your table. If you don't have one, let me know and I will make sure you get one. Jonesing that cigarette during times of stress and sheltering in place. 
And they had nurses that were sneaking outside through the doors, even though you're supposed to keep the door shut, right? So that's why I added this component to the test, because in a shelter-in-place scenario, if we're all supposed to remain indoors and not let any outside air fumes come in. Should we go outside and smoke a cigarette? No, not at all. So keep that in mind. We'll have to control those urges in any kind of shelter-in-place scenario. If a tornado is heading right for Wendell Foster, should I be outside Facebooking, live-streaming this tornado? If I'm at home, I have every right to do so, right? And I probably will, but not here at work. So keep that in mind. A shelter in place means that we'll find a safe location indoors and we're going to stay there until an all clear is given. Or if the building's no longer suitable for us to be in, such as an earthquake, an all clear will be given for us to evacuate. If we ever have to evacuate a cottage, we're coming right here to the young building. So keep that in mind. Now, if a shelter in place is given, and I work in Cottage A, but I'm over in Corf, should I run across the campus over to Cottage A? Or should I stay in Corf? Stay in Corf, call your supervisor, let them know so they know where you're at and that you're accounted for. And what I'm about to do is take you through step by step each and every single person here, their role during a shelter in place. First thing we always have to do, no matter what, is take care of the people that live here, visitors, <coughs> guests, patients, they come first. So we're going to make sure that they are safe. And we're going to make sure that we use the supplies on hand to keep them safe, keep them fed, keep them hydrated. We have lots of blankets, radios, food on hand, water on hand, so we're going to do all of that stuff. And we're also going to follow the directions of the chain of command. Because in this situation, do we want everybody to do their own thing? No. We all have to work together as a team. Now, honestly, I know our plan isn't perfect. But if a plan that's not perfect is in place, is that better than no plan? Yes. So at least we have something. So we're going to follow what we have. In fact, if there is a disaster, if there's any event that happens and we have to use our plan, we're going to have regulators check us if we don't follow our plans, we're in trouble. So we need to follow it every single time. So to start off with, our truck of nursing actually has key tasks to perform. This is Kim Trainer or anybody working in her capacity. They're going to make sure all the doors and windows are shut, all the shades are drawn, draw all the blinds. And they're going to guide the staff in creating a water supply. We're going to go ahead and fill up all the bathtubs and sinks with water for personal hygiene or flushing toilets. Because honestly, I would have to be really, really thirsty to drink bathtub water. I mean, come on now. So we're going to use that for personal hygiene and for flushing toilets. She's also going to notify the pharmacy and the vendors that we have an event going on because any event that we have like this, we're probably going to use more supplies than normal. So she's going to have them ready to resupply us for anything that we've used. And then she's going to help other people here contact family members. <clears throat> if, a, if a shelter in place event happens, we all know that families, friends, guardians are going to be worried. So we're going to go ahead and pre proactively call them up, let them know what's going on and how they can help. One thing to keep in mind, this is a shelter in place. Everybody stays in the building, we don't open the doors. Do we want family members to come on up to Wendell Foster and come in and check on people? No, that could be dangerous. So we're going to reassure them, give them as much information as we can, and let them know how they can help us. Get them busy doing something. And then Kim will help move patients to the evacuation site, which is right here if needed, monitor their condition, triage patients, place people on oxygen as needed, and secure a portable oxygen, oxygen tanks. She's also going to make sure we do a head count of staff and residents. Because if an event happens and we don't have an accurate head count, we're going to have to go look for people, right? Heaven forbid we're looking for somebody that's actually here and other people get hurt while searching. We don't want that to happen. So she's going to help maintain the head count that we have here at Wendell Foster. The nurses will help her by making sure the doors, the blinds, and windows are all shut and that they stay shut. 
They're going to help move people to the young building if needed. And they're going to make sure that the doors and windows stay shut. HVAC systems will be turned off if this is a bad event. It's going to be hot. It's going to be sweaty. It's going to be kind of stinky. Should we open the windows? No. They're going to make sure that we keep everything secure. They're also going to help us with the preparing the water supply and shutting off oxygen triage and patients. The DSPs are going to be the ones also, we have a lot of windows here, they're going to help us shut them. Help us fill up those tubs and move people here as needed. If we're not evacuating, they're going to still get people ready in case we have to. Just like we did with evacuating causes A, B, C, and D, they're going to get people ready for the worst case scenario if it happens. Now with medical records, very important part of our plan is HIPAA. If there's a disaster, does that mean we just ignore HIPAA laws? No, we have to keep HIPAA. Have to maintain it. So with Teresa working with the medical records, she's going to protect this information, put it all in central location, gather those records, and move them to the young building if needed. But that protection will be her responsibility. She will have the assistance of office staff and IT in getting that information. They will also gather the employee records for every single person that works here and protecting it also. Getting ready for to transport it if needed. They're also going to do a total backup of our computer system. So if our computers, something happens to it, they get destroyed, we'll still have all the information that we need to function. So they'll put all that up on the internet. Then they're going to plug every computer and secure every computer and device. Because if we have to evacuate, what could happen if somebody comes in and takes our computers? What would happen to all that data? That'd be bad, wouldn't it? So we still have to maintain the HIPAA by securing the computers even if we evacuate. Then, once we're finished with that, they will help call family members and guardians. That's going to be a big responsibility a lot of people involved with it. One of the other key steps is they're going to document every single decision that we make here at Wendell Foster. They're going to document what we decided to do and why we decided to do it. This is information that will be looked at after the event happens by regulators. They're going to study this. They're going to help us change our plan. Or if we did something wrong, they're going to make sure we know about it. So we're going to document everything. Finally, we're going to make sure that we keep our communication system up with our telephones. The QIDPs, they already have a relationship, a good one, with family members and guardians. So we're going to utilize them to help us make that contact with the guardians. And then they're going to work closely with the nursing staff and the DSPs to help fill in the cracks when it comes to taking care of the people who live here. Our maintenance men have a very big role in this. If this is a situation and we have to evacuate the facility, they're going to make the final rounds of the facilities and the grounds and make sure everything is secure. If it's a shelter in place and they're all stuck in different buildings, they're going to take care of that building they're in. They're going to secure those doors. They'll probably use a lot of duct tape to seal everything off. They'll be shutting off the HVAC systems. They're going to make any emergency repairs that's needed right then and there. They're also going to activate shutdown procedures if we ever have to evacuate a cottage to come here. That will be the HVAC systems, water supply, gas lines, anything that can cause big problems in the future. If there's anything that is a potential hazard where there's flying debris or large electrical lines laying down, people can actually get hurt by it. They're going to secure that and make sure to keep us safe. And then they're going to go to where we have our supplies. We have emergency radios, emergency blankets, food, flashlight, batteries. They're going to get it ready to transport if we have to get out of here after this event. Ladies and dietary, the ladies and gentlemen dietary are going to help keep our food supply viable. They're going to set every single freezer and refrigerator temperature to the lowest setting. Because if the power goes out, we want to prolong the life of that food as long as we can. They're also going to take Ziploc bags, fill it full of ice, place those in the freezers to help keep them cold. They're going to go to where we keep our emergency food and water supply and make sure we get a proper head count of what we have on, st on store, how many people are here, that's residents, patients, visitors, guests, and staff, 
and we're going to figure out the best way to take care of every single person here on site when it comes to food and water. And then they're going to notify the vendors that we have the event, that we're going to use up more supplies that we have on hand, and we already have contracts with them for them to come here and resupply us as soon as we make that phone call. The people of housekeeping and laundry are going to help us keep that place clean. Whatever building they're in, they're going to make sure they get all the supplies we need for cleanliness. They're going to secure the linens, make sure we have enough the pins on hand. They're going to help us fill in the cracks. It's going to be chaos at first, but we're going to rely on them to make sure this environment stays as clean as possible. Even if it comes down to the fact that we have to scrub the tubs before we fill up with water, they'll help us with that. And then they're going to help us move people to the young building if the cottages have to be evacuated. After the shelter in place, the people in transportation will go check their vehicles. The reason being, if this is an earthquake, could things fall on the vehicle and damage it? Yeah. So they're going to check them out, check the fuel, tire, air pressure, the oil. They're going to make sure they start. And then they're going to move the vehicles away from tall structures because you could have aftershocks. And aftershocks, trees can fall and crush your vehicles. So we're going to move them to a clear area. So we have to evacuate. We have vehicles to do it. And then we're going to make sure we contact our medical director. If we have to triage patients, this is the guy that we're going to follow his advice. If we have to do anything out of the ordinary when it comes to medical stuff, we're going to fall under his orders. He is the one who will make sure we make the right decisions every single time. Now, Corp has their own plan, and their plan merges perfectly with the ICF plan, what we just discussed here. Their plan is located in Sandy's office, and with their plan, again, you're going to account for every single patient, visitor, guest, and staff member, and you're going to encourage everybody to stay there. Here's my question, though. If people want to leave and they're a visitor, a patient, or a guest, can you force them to stay? It's called kidnapping, right? We don't kidnap here. But we can encourage them, can't we? Because once the doors lock, do we want people deciding at that moment to leave? So we need to let them know what is going on, encourage them with the decision-making process by giving them all the information, and then let them know that we're locking the place down. They're going to quickly lock the doors, close the windows, they're going to shut off the air vents, shut off the HVAC system, and work with maintenance and making sure we stop all airflow in and out of that building. It's important that we are prepared to assist in any way possible per the chain of command, because once we accomplish all of this, there may be other things that we need to do, so be ready to be flexible with that. Begin. We need to make sure that whatever we do is what chain of command tells us to do. Fun stuff, right? So let's move on to something a little bit different. What to do if you have an automobile, automobile accident and window foster vehicle? Alright, <coughs> what is the first thing you should do if you have an accident in one of our vehicles? That's right, you don't run, right? <coughs> no, that's how you end up on Lab PD or cops. <laughs> Davis County Sheriff's Department Facebook page to recognize this person with the little Brady picture. No, you don't run from the popo. No, you call 911. Call 911, let them know there's been an accident. Now, if you just open the door of the van and slam it into a brand new Porsche, you're going to run and say your name is Blair Gammon as you're running. <laughs> she says no. All right, you're going to go ahead and call the non-emergency number and let them know that you're going to get a police report. Why do we want a police report? Insurance. That's right, got to file a claim, don't we? So we have to have a police report for this. And along with the police reports, we're calling 911. Your next phone call will be to BJ. You're going to say, BJ, dude, I messed up. He's going to go ahead and do some stuff he needs to do, and he's going to start this paperwork with you for what we do every time we have an incident here at Wendell Foster. We need to track all this information. When it comes to this, because insurance, insurance is involved, we need to cross our T's, dot our I's, and be very specific with the information we give. So make sure we complete all paperwork before the end of the business day. This way we don't lose any information. 
Also, in every vehicle, you'll have iPads and the vehicle log sheet. The iPad is what you'll use to check the vehicles and make sure there's nothing wrong with them. The vehicle log sheet is what we fill out before we start the trip and when we're finished. <coughs> Notice how we put down the mileage. This form is what we use for reimbursement. So every trip we take with somebody, we track the mileage and we get money back based on the information we gave. So do we ever want to not fill this out? So this should be part of our habit here. Every time we get in a vehicle, every time we use it, make sure we fill this out here. And also, check the gas gauge. Now some vehicles will all use diesel, let's not get that confused. But every time they need fuel, you need to go see Lisa McCoy or Marcina Count and get the gas card. And then you're going to fill this up. If you've never done it before, it's okay. You can have somebody who has to go with you and show you the process. But there's a key component of this. Your receipt must have your first and last name on it and the vehicle number. Now what do you do with this receipt? Who knows? Turn it back in with the gas card. So I don't want it up and throw it on the floor. I don't toss it out the window. I don't shove it in my pants and wash it two or three times so you can't read it. I turn it in with the gas card. What's going to happen if I don't turn it in with the gas card? Somebody may hunt you down, right? So make sure we turn that in. It's vital. Every expense that we have here at Wendell Foster, we have to have a receipt for it. We get audited on this. So we have to justify everything we spend money on, so seats are very important. All right, now our upcoming events. Christmas is around the corner. And for everybody that's new here to Wendell Foster, every year we have a Christmas meal. This is your chance to bring your family in here to our Wendell Foster Family Fellowship. We offer three different times for meals. We want to know who will be there at what time, so we can provide the right amount of food for everybody. We have sign-up sheets in the back left-hand corner. Please make sure you sign up for that. Let us know who will be here and at what time. Also, this year, we're doing the angel tree again. The angel tree is for Wendell Foster employees. If you know of an employee who's going to have, who has kids that aren't going to have the Christmas that you feel like they need this year, maybe they're going through hard times, maybe they need an angel in their life, this is your moment to help them out. Fill this form out for Wendell Foster employees, anybody who's having a tough time providing for their children for Christmas. Turn it in by December 2nd. You can get the form at the front desk. What we'll do is have a Christmas tree in the Elmo building. It'll have ornaments on there with the person's age, what they need, and maybe preferences for gifts. And this will be your opportunity to be somebody's angel for Christmas. This is a great fun event. It stays confidential. Nobody has to know who bought what for somebody. Nobody has to, you don't have to know who the person was you bought a gift for. But it's gift giving that we want to really emphasize with Christmas, and this is your chance to 